Let me see you go back. Let me see you come in. That album took about eight months to do. It was very interesting putting it together. I learned a lot. When we did back and forth, that was when we started talking about my image, and I said I wanted to be me. I always wore baggy clothes, wore sunglasses. When One in a Million was released, I had just turned 17, and I wanted to take a step up from the first album, show my growth, add a little bit more sex appeal, but it was still me. I was 10 years old when I went on Star Search, and um, it was a show that my mother and I watched faithfully, and I always wanted to be on it. Now, Leah, you're a great singer. What else do you do? Well, of course, I love to sing, and I love to dance and act, and I love swimming. Wow, it was an incredible experience, me and McMahon, and just being on the Star Search stage because it was a show that I really looked up to. Though it's been said many times, many ways, Merry Christmas. I performed at the White House, it was Christmas in Washington, and that was really major because uh, it was really great to perform for him because he really loves music, and you can see the passion in his eyes as he's watching you. And, um, oh gosh, we were all so nervous. <laughs> very mysterious person and when you first meet me I don't really think you know where I'm coming from it takes a while to get to know me I think it's because I take my time to get to know people you're gonna get someone who's affable who's nice but you're not gonna get the whole picture people have failed to realize why it has been so important for these people to keep bringing up Aaliyah's name in this alleged marriage with R. Kelly they often overlook the fact that if you compare these certificates, they claim to be real, to real marriage certificates, you will see that something just ain't right. And on their pursuit to get this justice for this illegal act, they always want to leave out names. Make sure you watch this video in its entirety for my full commentary. Because I find it very strange they want to leave out certain people's accounts as to what happened versus the people who will give light to their false narratives. But, um, it's only a number. I'll give you a hint though. <laughs> my, my birthday. <clears throat> Monday's my birthday, and it's going to be a very sweet birthday. So, hint, hint. Figure it out. It's going to be a very, very sweet birthday. Uh oh, so. uh oh. I think she gave us enough. <laughs> Video music box and doing my thing. And uh, is this your first time on stage in New York? My first time on stage. And you, you said you were getting ready to go on. You said you're nervous. Yes, I always get nervous no matter where I perform. Just natural. I always get nervous. And then after I get out there, <laughs> Some people say that that's that's good to get nervous. It's like you know that means that you you know you're building up yourself to really get and you know do a good show. That's what people tell me. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I sure hope so because <laughs> I get nervous. <laughs> it's funny because when you when back and forth first came out, we were trying to get in contact and said, well, look, we want to get Aaliyah to come out and do some stuff with us. And hey, well, she's in high school, and we were like, no, that girl's not in high school because you didn't look. You know how the video looked. Right, right. Well, <laughs> And, and um, you know, how have you been, you know, taking this all happened very quickly? Mm -hmm, I did. It's something you definitely have to get used to, and I think that's a given at any age. But um, with high school, I go to Form Arts High School in Detroit, so mm -hmm. they're very supportive of me. So it, it works out pretty good. And there's a whole bunch of stars in there, so everybody treats you pretty <laughs> much the same. Yeah, the kids want to get into it, so basically most of my friends have been supportive, and they've been there for me. There's going to have a handful that, you know, may be jealous, but basically, all right, all right. And now you started off, uh, R. Kelly produced you, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you, you got out there, and I mean, he's produced a couple of projects this year, but yours was the most successful outside of his own that he's done. <laughs> and 
And of course, you know, there was some controversy going on, so I'm going to cut to the chase and we're going to get it off. I know everybody okay. asked it. What is the situation? Because we don't know. <laughs> okay, we'll let you know. To let you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, I want to let everybody know that it's not true. I'm Alia, not Alia Kelly. And it's just, you know, it's not true. But I think, you know, hey, this comes with the territory. When you're in this business, people are going to talk. So I just mm -hmm. ignore it. All right, you heard it. Right from her mouth. You didn't have to hear from nobody else. No radio stations. Not me. You heard it right from her. That's it. It's Leah. That's it. Don't even have a boyfriend. Uh oh, now. Now you. Works in. Three years ago, there was this terrible rumor out. Mm -hmm. What is the deal with you and Aaron Kelly? Are you all married or not? No, I'm not married. Um, Robert's doing his thing. I'm doing my thing. He's a great producer, a great artist. Well, I do admire it. Um, R. Kelly's marriage to the late singer is no secret, but over the years, many people had questioned how the two were able to tie the knot, considering at the time that Aaliyah was only 15 years old. Now, these new, this new indictment accuses the R&B singer of paying off officials for that marriage license. As R. Kelly sits in federal prison in Illinois for child pornography and obstruction of justice, a New York grand jury indicts Kelly on new charges for crimes in Cook County, among them racketeering and bribery. Federal documents show in August 1994, Kelly created a fraudulent identification document, then bribed a public officer and public employee. This all taking place one day prior to the singer's marriage to Aaliyah Houghton, who was a minor. Aaliyah was Kelly's artist protege turned wife. The marriage license showed Aaliyah was 18 when she was truly 15 at the time. Kelly was 27. The indictment alleges Kelly and his entourage would tour the country to intentionally recruit women and girls to engage in illegal sexual activity. It was just a quick little ceremony. In the documentary Surviving R. Kelly, a former tour manager spoke about what's now alleged in the federal indictment and his part in the marriage license forgery. I uh, went and I, um, I, um, I'm not proud of that. I forged, I had papers forged for them. But Aaliyah was underage. Now, R. Kelly's attorney tonight says that this indictment doesn't add anything new to the case. We did reach out to the Cook County State's Attorney's Office to see if Kim Fox plans to open an investigation because of the accusations of what this official here in Cook County did. She had no comment. The new headline this evening about R. Kelly, the singer now fighting back against chilling allegations in that docuseries about him. And his lawyer tonight fiercely defending his client, saying R. Kelly didn't know he married Aaliyah when she was just 15 because the attorney says she lied about her age. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. Does he deny ever having a sexual relationship with someone who was under the age of consent? Yes. He absolutely does. Was he married to Aaliyah when she was 15? He was married to her when she was 15. But so then 15 is not of the age of legal consent, right? I mean, right. except that my understanding is that she did not claim to be 15. And in order to get married, she had to lie about her age. And he is saying that he had no idea. No idea. <laughs> Right now, I'm producing a um, very talented uh, lady, uh, young lady. She's 14, uh, Aaliyah. She's 14, uh, Aaliyah. Uh, she's real street. She just, you know, just be chilling, you know, man. And um, the song I had her working on is Who's in a Click, you know, which is saying who's in her little click that she's got, you know, uh, in her little posse. Hey, Aaliyah. Yeah. That first verse is funky, right? Mm. What I want you to do is, I want you to try to get into it just a little bit more for me. Okay. Just get into it a little more, make it a little more street, all right? All right. Sound good, though, baby. All right. You know what, Aaliyah? Sound real cool. Oh, damn. Sound real cool. <laughs> what we need to do, when you're doing your, um, when you're doing your click thing, I want you to, um, how, how is it first up? All my homies and my husband and the thing. Um, you real funky with it. I just want you to lift up on your tone and just have fun, you know, like you was doing earlier. Just have a little fun with it. We're gonna go, we're gonna do the third verse. We're gonna go through the third verse. You nail, you done just nailed that first and second verse with a hammer. So we're gonna go through the third verse.
wondering what I'm going to get in case the camera don't get it. This is going to get me a cheese grill. You know, that's all I want to write about now. Yeah, my life. Can't go nowhere without this. This is when I come up with a few ideas, I have to jot it down. So, uh, yeah. You get a lot of different characters coming here every now and then, you know. I know them all, man, because I've been coming here for a long time, man. Ever since I was about 15, you know, I've been coming in here. The cheese toast. Right here. White palace. <laughs> cheese toast. <laughs> Back to the hood of things where I started from. Can you really believe everything you see considering how technology has advanced? And all these people talk about this evidence that they have found, which should have been available back then. But instead of being able to address these new allegations, all these people can do is yield insults instead of recognizing what parent in their right mind would want to keep trying to encourage their children to participate in these lifestyles? It says a lot that these people rely so heavily on a deceased person to solidify their narratives that R. Kelly is such a pedophile. These people with these new allegations keep running with that narrative and forget all the things they've posted in the past. And we're supposed to bypass all the shady business that would make you suspect that there's more going on in the background. Everybody knows that when it comes to the entertainment industry, it's all smoke and mirrors. And people will use things to leverage against you to rob you blind. And others will be used to paint these narratives while other people go unnoticed. Nobody brings up their past and the things that they have been alleged to participate in. And the narratives we've heard tend to shift depending on who's telling it. If they want us to believe R. Kelly's enterprise was solely to traffic girls, what does that say about all the people who worked with him and toured with him and performed with him? It's a coincidence that all these people are affiliated and we're supposed to bypass that in the entertainment industry, we hear often how people are in these fake marriages, these fake relationships. But we're supposed to give so much credit to this alleged marriage that was printed in an entertainment magazine. We clearly see the motivation for that. This marriage certificate, along with that alleged tape, is what they've been holding over R. Kelly's head. And anybody who could contradict the stories mysteriously found themselves in misfortune but when they tell you these stories why don't they talk about the reverend nathan edmund why don't they talk about how different these marriage certificates look from an authentic certificate why don't they point out all the names to the people they claim are enablers instead of just in my opinion, trying to intimidate people to cooperate with their false narratives. It's too many questions that have gone unanswered about this whole narrative. And when you get to striking nerves, instead of being able to answer these narratives, you hear more bullshit. Now, when I heard Steve Greenberg make his statement, I felt like this man has to be either the stupidest attorney on the planet or he has a plan and to me it seems like when he made that statement what happened we heard all these different narratives start to emerge all these new narratives start to emerge these people say R. Kelly married this girl because she was pregnant then turn around and say she was forced to get an abortion then turn around and claim other people have pictures of her pregnant, but how would you have pictures of her pregnant if she got an abortion? Clearly she would get an abortion before she's showing, right? This industry is evil, and it's obvious that the people that are in the industry end up in the same category, hooked on drugs, in jail, 
or dead. Other than that, you find yourself a victim of circumstance. They give you these lifestyles. They put these people around you. And then they plant these narratives. Nobody cares about the black girls. But what about the black boys who find themselves victim to this slave mentality? We're going to keep overlooking these parents that have come out and denied these allegations. And people keep asking, why aren't they speaking out? How many times do they have to speak out to deny a lie? And how many times do we overlook the fact that these people have people from the FBI, CIA, and all that in the industry working to fulfill their agendas. This whole thing started with the rumor. Let's not keep talking about the rumors and focus on the facts. And the facts would show that the rumors and the statements made by these people do not add up. They want us to mute R. Kelly now even though they continue to promote him and these false narratives. So what are you to believe? We're going to overlook the obvious corruption around this young lady's death, but we're going to keep bringing her up to nail this coffin shut on R. Kelly. Make this shit make sense. Now, if you go back to the first trial, like I've said all along, you would think if these people had all this clear-cut evidence now, they would have had it then. But the thing is, even in the first trial, it was a lot of evidence that was deemed inadmissible. And that is what I feel what happened in this current case is a lot of this so-called evidence they claim to have will be inadmissible. But nonetheless, anybody with basic common sense knows how the FBI and how law enforcement works. If a person gets caught up in illegal activities, they can cut a deal with the state, with whoever is prosecuting them in order to get out of whatever they have going on. And I feel like that has been the main drive in a lot of these interviews and a lot of these people speaking on public platforms. Because as I said from the beginning, we are watching these people build this case. Contrary to the narrative they have about having all this, this evidence, I believe they have been sitting back trying to build their case based off of a lot of things that have been said on these public platforms. Now, if you go back to Demetrius Smith, who openly admits to these criminal activities, we don't see him being prosecuted, now do we? He says it was Daryl McDavid's idea to get this whole marriage done. So hypothetically, let's say they did this behind Barry Hankerson's back, but at some point Barry found out. And what he did from that point until now says a lot. So I'm not buying the fact that he believed his underage niece was married to his artists but i do believe that was used as leverage to cover up for all the misfortunes that was going on because as i pointed out in previous videos you can see from 97 on to 2009 all these ucc filings from r kelly and daryl mcdavid i said a while ago that if it wasn't for all these shady business practices that I don't feel like we would be here today with this case. But in order for people to cover up their misdeeds, I feel like these girls were used as a smoke screen, as a smoke screen, similar to how they're doing with Aaliyah. In what other case have you heard them use a deceased person? You've always heard no victim, no crime. But in order to get around this little loophole, they're not going to charge him with this alleged illegal act. They're going to charge him for the misdeeds that other people have admitted to. What's funny is this man is being criminally charged for these rumors and these people can't even get their story straight. Just go back and review all the stories that came from Demetrius Smith. 
and how what he said way back in 2008 compared to what he's saying now compared to what the FBI, Homeland Security, is accusing R. Kelly of being involved in. According to what was said in the past, it was agreed upon because Aaliyah was allegedly pregnant that R. Kelly, he committed a felony by knowingly impregnating her. So Daryl McDavid's solution was they have to get married. So Demetrius Smith goes to this, he said back then, DHS office. And according to the story, they paid this DHS officer to get an ID. But that doesn't explain why these marriage certificates look so fraudulent. But anyways, they claim that Aaliyah was present and was there to get this ID. So we're going to need to know who this public office aide is because they never mention who this is. Shouldn't this person who had a sworn duty to fulfill a job be prosecuted if she allegedly accepted money for an underage girl to get a fake ID? Who's to say she hasn't done this many other times? We're going to believe on this one occasion she just did this and let this underage girl get a fake ID. And according to them, they used three forms of ID to get this alleged marriage certificate, including Aaliyah's school ID. So you're going to tell me they took a school ID as one of these three IDs to the courts to this David Orr person who's supposed to be verifying this information and he didn't notice this is a school ID. This school ID did not indicate how old this girl is. Another person they don't talk about. Why isn't this clerk who allegedly participated in marrying this girl, why isn't she, why isn't he being prosecuted? According to the stories, they knew somebody who was related to this pastor, Nathan Edmond. Where is that person? Where is the pastor, Nathan Edmond? Are they not going to be prosecuted? These are the questions that I have to ask if we're supposed to believe this is a real thing. So according to the story, this public aid office fast-tracked this false ID for $500. And nobody is going to get prosecuted except for R. Kelly. Kelly is the one being charged with bribery for paying off this government employee. They never mention who was in charge of taking these photos and who got this underage girl this fake ID. So let's fast forward to all the things that we saw play out in these lives on YouTube and how former employees would say things like Aaliyah's family knew about the things that were going on. Well, in my opinion, what I took from that is, in watching the full video, that Aaliyah's parents were fully aware of the shady business that Barry Hankerson was doing. Ask yourself a question. Why wouldn't they allow Gladys Knight, a very infamous singer, be a mentor to this young girl instead of taking her to R. Kelly, who was clearly being groomed as a sex symbol? These are the questions you should be asking yourself instead of running with the false narratives and just believing, oh, it was printed in this magazine, so it must be true. These people are saying that, never mind their motives. Think about it. I believe this was the start in the setup, and it started to boost Aaliyah's career. And what it ended up doing was being leveraged to control R. Kelly.